Yesterday, we began looking at the answer to one of the greatest questions that an individual can ever ask, and that is, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Once a person realizes that they are in sin and that they have need of a Savior, they must first realize that we cannot be righteous before God based upon our own merit. Because we understand that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Therefore, we are in need of a Savior. Since the wages of sin is death, God sent His Son to pay the price. He was the propitiation, the atonement for our sins. He bore the punishment so that we might be set free from our sins. But how is it that we respond to God's saving grace? How is it that we receive that free gift of salvation? Well, we talked yesterday about the fact that we must begin by placing our faith in Jesus. Without our faith in him as the Christ and in his sacrifice on the cross, then we cannot progress in our walk toward salvation. But once we believe that Jesus is the Christ, then we must be willing to repent of our sins. We have to turn away from that which is evil and turn toward that which is good. We must feel remorse over the sins that we've committed and realize that that godly sorrow that we feel is what brings us to repentance. We turn away from our sins. But then, as we see with the example of the Ethiopian in Acts chapter 8 and verse 37, we have to be willing to confess our faith in Christ. The Ethiopian... He saw water, and he said, Here's water. What doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said to him, If you believe with all your heart, then you may. And we see that wonderful confession. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. This profession is one that should always be upon the lips of a Christian, always ready to be shared. But where we left off in our study yesterday... And where we're going to pick up today is with this fourth step. This is a step into salvation. Everything we've seen up to this point has been a step unto or toward salvation. But in order to get into salvation, into Christ, we must be baptized into Christ. Jesus proclaimed that one must be baptized to be saved, Whenever he said, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he who believeth not shall be condemned, Mark 16, 16. On the day that the church was established, on the day of Pentecost, Peter told his hearers on that day, those who believed in Jesus, to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. And then throughout the book of Acts, we find people responding to the gospel in faith, repentance, and immersion in water. And whenever this happened, the blood of Christ cleansed them from sin. They were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, and they were added to the church. Well, the same blessings are available to us today. But once we are in Christ, we must remain in Christ. And we do that by living a faithful Christian life. The Christian life begins at the point of baptism. And this is a lifelong journey with Christ. And this is to last until either we die physically or until the Lord comes again. Jesus calls us to live for him every moment of this journey. He said in Luke 9 and verse 23, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Friends, as we walk each day, we will stumble and fall. The Apostle John reassures us, though, that if we walk in the light as he or as God is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus his Son purifies us or cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1 and verse 7. John added, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness, 1 John 1 and verse 9. 
Friends, God calls us to be faithful to Him, no matter what the cost. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today. Please consider these things we've discussed, and have a blessed day.